وتمتعه فيها طويلة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد All these great personalities that we know and we hear and especially in the fields of Irfan and obedience whoever has got to any rank it is by the Holy Quran and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam so you can't get to any rank with just one of them you need both of them and equal importance has to be given to both of them now when we see the the biographies of these noble ones especially those who were living who are living now and who have been living in our time all of them gave gave particular importance to both of them to the ahlul bayt and to quran for example one of them is marhum ayatullah al uzma Reza Bahauddini, who passed away in 1998, one of those great ulama who lived for about a century, and among the means of his success also was this excessive bond of his with the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, in particular Amir al Mu'mineen and Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhim salam. Now, this old man he used to work. Uh, like an ordinary person in these majalis, like preparing tea and sits in the kitchen, uh, offering tea to those uh, of the azadars, the mullahs who used to participate in these majalis. Likewise, his connection with the Holy Quran says as many as 20 Jews of Quran at times he used to recite, and that is that excessive love he has to the Holy Quran. Now himself, he wanted to become a carpenter. But then his father says that, do you believe in the istikhara? He says, yes. He says, I'll do an istikhara and see what you should be. And then he says, I did an istikhara. It came out to be good. And I want you to be an alim. Go study in the hausa. He accepted. So he says, although my joy and my love was to be a carpenter, but then I moved and I went to study and became the best of the ulama of his time. Now, when we see these noble ones, when it comes to the time of prayers, for example, when the Azan was recited, they were not themselves. It was a total disconnect uh, from where they were and uh, everything surrounding them. And the focus was towards the Salat and prayers and giving importance to Salat. Likewise, he used to give a lot of importance uh, in inviting people uh, whenever they have problems uh, by, by solving, the, getting them solved by reciting salawat and then hadith isa or participating in the majalis of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. So, when we see these noble ones, and especially there is a hadith also, it says that in the zikr al salihin tanzil al rahma, when you are reminded or when you remember or when you talk about these noble ones, these salihin, Allah's mercy descends because we also. Uh, get moved to and we want to be uh, we, we try to resemble them because we have no access to the imams we have no access to the prophets but then these great personalities they are a reflection <coughs> and a remnant of the prophets and the imams and by looking at them and their akhlaq and their seerah and their character we also get connected to the prophets and to the imams alayhim salam now how do we get closer to Allah? How do we get closer to Quran and the Ahlul Bayt? Now these little tips that these great personalities gave now over here because we are talking about Marhum Ayatullah Bahauddini. He says, as long as you do not commit any haram, any sin, the path ahead is turbulence free. No hurdles will be there on your path. The moment we get into contamination and then committing of wrong and haram and disobedience of Allah, that is where all these hurdles and all these turbulences, they come in, in our life. Now, the Hajjud, every one of us, you know, we try to offer these night prayers and uh, just wake up for about half an hour, 20 minutes before Fajr and then offer these few rakat of prayers. But this great personality, he used to do that, but not uh, uh, unlike us. His was two, three hours and then it was just a few minutes of the Salat. Most of it was reciting Quran and then reflection and and then looking into the creation of Allah the Barak wa Ta'ala and that 
that is looking into uh, that uh, self and nafs. So <clears throat> the, these great personalities, when you see the hadith, uh, hadith says that ru'yatul alim yuzakirullah. When you look at them, you are reminded of Allah wa Taala. Now, one of the other personalities you have heard of is Ayatullah al Uzma Bahja. Now, in the last days of the life of Ayatullah al Uzma Bahauddini, Ayatullah Bahja he goes to visit him. He wants to kiss his hand, he doesn't allow. Now, his age is almost a century. Now, this Ayatullah Bahjad, he's about 80 years old. He doesn't allow to kiss his hand. Then, uh, now, those who were present around him, they say that we all uh, observed. Both of them were sitting there. Ayatullah Bahjad didn't speak, uh, speak a word, just looking at, at him. As if there was some kind of an internal communication happening between the two of them. And then for more than an hour, they were sitting there and he looked at him. And then when he stood up again to kiss his hand, and now he comes out of the house. Now he looks at the house, the, the humble dwelling of his, and the ceiling, the doors and everything, and then returns back to his room. Once again, he looks at everything around him and says that, uh, I wish the neighbors knew what kind of a great neighbor he was, who was living here, but no one knew. And Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever he used to frequent and come and visit this great personality, those visitations of the Imam, uh, those neighbors benefited, but they were unaware of who this great man is, who this great man was. Now in the last week of his life, he says to his son that a week from today I'll depart. A week from today I'll depart and... Uh, uh, Salman and Abu Zar alayhim salam they will participate in my funeral and it so happens that after a week uh, he dies and then here Ayatullah Bahjat who participated in his funeral he says that someone has passed away in whose funeral the best from among the foremost that is Salman and Abu Zar they participated in his funeral now when we go for ziyarat what we do is that after paying a visit to the Ma'asum alayhi salam and then reciting the ziyarat wida, when we come by the door, we say assalamu alaikum and then we come back. And then we come to another door, we say that salam again and again at, uh, when we are out of the haram by the main gates, again we turn back and say assalamu alaikum to the imam. Now here Ayatullah Bahauddini, when he used to pay a visit, one salam, once he had done with the ziyarat, another one salam and then he used to walk out of the haram. His students, they say that your seerah and your observance and performance over here is different to others. Everyone says so many salams and you just say one salam when you walk in and one salam when you walk out. Uh, why is it like that? He says that every salam every that I greet the Imam and Ma'asum with, I get a reply from him. So one salam when I enter and he, he replies to my salam, I hear that salam. And when I'm leaving and I say assalamu alaikum, he responds to my salam again. And more than that, I am ashamed. I feel shy to bother the Imam by so many salams. Such a great personality. Now, one of my asatid, Ayatullah Mishkini, Rahmatullahi alayhi, he was the Ustad of Akhlaq. He says that in the last days of his life, life of Ayatullah Bahauddini, I and my son-in-law, Ayatullah Ray Shahri, we too intended to go and visit him. And we said that we'll ask him in these days that you've been ill, where you visited by Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu wasalam. Now this was the question in the minds of Ayatullah Mishkini and Ayatullah Ray Shahri, both of them. They say that when, I, when we came to visit Ayatullah Bahauddini, we sat in his room after greeting him, the first thing he abruptly said to us is that just before you walked in, Imam al-Asr alayhi salatu was salam was here in this room. A salam he gave and greeted me with. The impact and the weight of that was heavier than the creation of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Now these are these great personalities that we have and that's the asset of the Shia world and hadith from Imam Kazim alayhi salatu wasalam says that إِذَا مَاتَ الْمُؤْمِنْ 
Now this is regarding a general mu'min, whosoever is a believer. It says, إِذَا مَاتَ الْمُؤْمِنِ بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ When a mu'min dies, the angels, they weep upon him. And وَبِقَاءِ الْأَرْضِ أَلَّتِي كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهَا And all those spots of earth wherein he used to worship, all of them they weep, weep for him. And the sky, doors of the skies, they weep for him. And which doors? Those doors by his actions that he used to ascend higher and higher. All of them, they weep for him. And the believers and the jurists, and when someone dies, a notch will appear in Islam which nothing can fill. The believers, the jurists, the fuqaha are the forts of Islam, like the forts surrounding a city. Now this is regarding Marhumatullah al-Azma, Baha'uddini, Rahmatullahi alayh, wa subhana rabbika rabbil aizzati amma yasifoon, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma